than 10 days since Senator Barack Obama won the election, cementing his path to become the country's 44th president and the first African-American president in U.S. history. Over the course of his almost two-year campaign, Obama came under attack on a number of fronts, but in the late stage of the presidential race, no other name was used more by the McCain-Palin campaign against Obama than Bill Ayers. Bill Ayers is a respected Chicago professor who was a member of the 1960s militant anti-war group The Weather Underground. On Wednesday, more than a week after Obama beat John McCain in the election, Republican vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin again brought up Obama's alleged ties to Ayers in an interview on CNN. Well, I still am concerned about that association with Bill Ayers, and, and if anybody still wants to talk about it, I will, because this is an unrepentant domestic terrorist who had campaigned to blow up, to destroy our Pentagon and our U.S. Capitol. That's an association that still bothers me, and I think it's still fair to talk about it. However, the campaign is over. That chapter is closed. Now is the time to move on and to, uh, again, make sure that all of us are doing all that we can to progress this nation, keep us secure, get the economy back on the right track. And many of us do have some ideas on how to do that, and hopefully we'll be able to put all that wisdom and experience to good use together. So looking back, you don't regret that tough language during the campaign? No, and I do not think that it is off-base, nor mean-spirited, nor negative campaigning to call someone out on their associations and on their record. And, and In the closing weeks of the presidential race, Governor Palin repeatedly invoked Bill Ayers on the campaign trail as a line of attack against Obama. I'm afraid this is someone who sees America as imperfect enough to work with a former domestic terrorist who had targeted his own country. There's no question that Bill Ayers, via his own admittance, was um, one who sought to destroy our U.S. Capitol and our Pentagon. That, that is a domestic terrorist. One of his earliest supporters is a man who, according to the New York Times, was a domestic terrorist and part of a group of a group that, quote, launched a campaign of bombings that would target the Pentagon and the U.S. Capitol. The McCain campaign even put out automated robocalls to voters in swing states to highlight Obama's alleged links to Bill Ayers. Hello. I'm calling for John McCain and the RNC because you need to know that Barack Obama has worked closely with domestic terrorist Bill Ayers, whose organization bombed the U.S. Capitol, the Pentagon, a judge's home and killed Americans. And Democrats will enact an extreme leftist agenda if they take control of Washington. Barack Obama and his Democratic allies lack the judgment to lead our country. This call was paid for by McCain-Palin in 2008 and the Republican National Committee. On television, an attack ad by the Conservative American Issues Project was played in key battleground states linking Obama to Bel Airs. Beyond the speeches, how much do you know about Barack Obama? What does he really believe? Consider this. United 93 never hit the Capitol on 9-11. But the Capitol was bombed 30 years before by an American terrorist group called Weather Underground that declared war on the U.S., targeting the Capitol, the Pentagon, police stations, and more. One of the group's leaders, William Ayers, admits to the bombings, proudly saying later, we didn't do enough. Some members of the group Ayers founded even went on to kill police. But Barack Obama is friends with Ayers, defending him as, quote, respectable and mainstream. Obama's political career was launched in Ayers' home, and the two served together on a left-wing board. Why would Barack Obama be friends with someone who bombed the Capitol and is proud of it? Do you know enough to elect Barack Obama? American Issues Project is responsible for the content of this ad. On Fox News, Bill O'Reilly made Bill Ayers his drumbeat. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. The Factor confronts William Ayers. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. As I said before, the radical Chicago teacher, Bill Ayers, is Barack Obama's worst nightmare. Here's a guy who simply won't go away, a man most Americans detest, but a legitimate issue when evaluating a potential president's associations. One caveat here. The Factor believes the economy and national security are the two most important issues in this campaign by far. We don't believe William Ayers rises anywhere near those things. However, Ayers is interesting. Here's a guy who calls himself an anarchist, has admitted committing terrorist acts, even participated in bombing a police station here in New York City. And Barack Obama gave him a blurb for his book in the Chicago Tribune? That, ladies and gentlemen, is no small thing. 
Ayers has been hiding out. We watched him for a number of days before Jesse Waters finally caught up with him. How do you feel about being the centerpiece of this presidential election? All right. What's your relationship with Barack Obama, Mr. Ayers? <clears throat> Did he write a blurb for your book and sit on a panel with you? Now this is this is my property. Would you please leave? Mr. Ayers, do you want to take this opportunity to apologize for your terrorist acts? <clears throat> Mr. Ayers, don't you think it's time for some repentance? Do you still consider yourself an anarchist? Do you notice the red star on his shirt there? Now, here's the irony. After Jesse's brief chat with uh, Mr. Ayers, the guy calls the police, the same police he tried to kill back in the 60s. That is called ironies. Well, the police came and escorted uh, Ayers back to his car. Don't you just love this? When a terrorist guy needs some help, who does he call? The cops, like everybody else. Now, some misguided souls feel sorry for Bill Ayers. I don't. He said plenty of time to apologize for trying to hurt fellow Americans. He has never said he's sorry, most likely because he's not sorry. I actually think Barack Obama should apologize for hanging with the guy. He should throw him under the bus just like he did Reverend Wright. Look, Senator, everybody makes mistakes. You made one. This is a bad guy. Just say you made a mistake in judgment. Then it goes all the way. But Obama has not done that, so poor Jesse had to track Ayers down. That should be the end of the story, but of course... It won't be. Throughout the entire presidential race, Bill Ayers did not once talk to the media. Today, he and his wife, Bernadine Dorn, a fellow member of the Weather Underground, are speaking out in their first joint television interview since the controversy began. Bill Ayers is now a distinguished professor of education, a senior university scholar at the University of Illinois, Chicago. He's the author of many books, including his 2001 memoir, Fugitive Days, Memoirs of an Anti-War Activist, which is being reissued this week. Bernadine Dorn is an associate professor of law at North Northwestern University School of Law and the director of the Northwestern's Children and Family Justice Center. Well, Democracy Now!'s Juan Gonzalez and I spoke with both of them from a studio in their hometown of Chicago. In a wide-ranging conversation, we discussed the McCain campaign attacks, President-elect Obama, the weather underground, their plans for the future, and much more. I began by asking Bill Ayers to respond to the controversy surrounding him in the presidential race. We um, actually didn't pay a lot of attention to it. We recognized that there was this cartoon character kind of thrust up on the screen, and I was an unwitting and unwilling um, uh, part of this presidential campaign. We tried not to watch it, because pretty much it was uh, distracting and, and kind of crazy-producing. On the other hand, as you play those, there's, there's so much that's dishonest in it that it's— um, it's kind of impossible to kind of know where to enter it. First of all, the idea that <clears throat> Bill O'Reilly says, um, you know, that, that I was in hiding. I wasn't in hiding. I was teaching and speaking and writing and doing all the things I do. What I wasn't doing was commenting on the presidential campaign to the media. And I decided not to do that. We decided not to do that when this all began, because we couldn't figure out a way to interrupt what we took to be a profoundly dishonest narrative that, uh, you know, had no— um, we had no purchase. We had no way into it. And what's dishonest about it, I mean, there are many things. One is, um, I was not a terrorist. I never was a terrorist. And the idea that the Weather Underground carried out terrorism is nonsense. We never killed or hurt a person. We never intended to. We existed from 1970 to 1976, the last years, the last half decade of uh, the war in Vietnam. And, by contrast, the war in Vietnam really was a terrorist undertaking. The war in Vietnam was terror on a mass scale, with thousands of people every month being murdered, um, mostly from the air. And we were doing everything we could to stop it. So, again, it's hard to know where to start to interrupt that narrative.